The variability in the quality of an inquiry is unfortunately staggering. Clients can be lazy and dump a ton of information on you to sift through, miss out information completely, or don't direct you on what to look out for. Let's take a look at how to efficiently evaluate and analyze a tender. Hi, I'm Chris from The School of Sub, the YouTube channel that brings you commercial and tendering tips to help elevate your subcontracting business. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our content. Here I break down three areas which may impact your tendering and the accuracy of your tender return. Let's take a look. Drawings and information. Now it's quite common for drawings and information to be missing from a tender. Now this could be down to the client or the design team but the quickest way of finding out what's missing is by requesting and reviewing the document register. Also, as an expert in your field, you may know that there's an overlap between different consultants, so information could be easily forgotten in a tender. For example, if you're a roofing contractor, you'll know there's gonna be penetrations on the roof. And let's say in this lovely world that we're in, the architect's information isn't coordinated with the M&E information. So there's no penetration shown on the roof, but really, you know you should allow for it. So ask for the m and &E information so you can return an accurate price for the client. If you feel the information is lacking and you need better quality information to help return a comprehensive price, you should go back to the client and request this because they probably won't be happy with a budget at this stage. And by going back to them early, you will give them the opportunity to go back to the design team and get better information for you. If your work's entailed design responsibility and there's no mention of collateral warranties, you might want to get this checked out with a client because you don't want a collateral warranty dropped on your desk when you need to produce o &M information at the end of the project. In our previous video, we also talked about commercial items to look out for, such as payment terms, defect periods, and damages. You can check it out here. Scope. Sometimes the scope in a tender inquiry can be vague, and sometimes the client may be asking too much or too little of the works package. Here's three things for you to look out for when reviewing the scope. Number one, products. If the client is asking for a specific product, you need to get this clarified early if they're open to an alternative because you can't provide that system. The specification, MBS or detailed specification documents are great, but you need to check them carefully. They may be asking for a certain finish, testing, or even samples and mock-ups for that particular system. So check this out because it could significantly impact your price. Number three, prelims. Now, prelims can vary between trade and very rarely do clients give you a good indication of what's required. So if they're missing an attendance schedule, simply request it from the client and this will help you build up your prelim allowance for the project. The takeaway. Analyzing a tender before you start pricing gives you the chance to really understand the project and the employer's requirements. By doing this at the start, you can raise RFIs and queries much earlier than if you dive straight in and start assessing it as you go. This means you can return your price on time and it will be much more accurate with the correct information. And that's a wrap from me guys. Don't forget to like, share and leave me a comment if you want me to discuss a topic of your choice. See you next time. Awesome.